Yay! Yay! Let's do a simple example to get a feel for how rockets work. And this is actually going to be wrong, but it's right in some sort of fundamental sense, and then we'll fix it up to be a lot better um, coming up. But let's do it the wrong way first, but it'll still give us a good idea of how uh, this thing is supposed to work. This is going to be a ping pong rocket, so and it's really not even much of a rocket. So imagine that you're on a, um, a cart that can roll, and uh, you, are, you and the cart have a mass of 100 kilograms, and you have 100 kilograms of ping pong balls on board the rocket. That's going to be your, your fuel, as it were. Um, okay, so the total mass of everything that's on the cart is 200 kilograms. Let's say that. Uh, okay, and then what you do is you start firing ping pong balls towards the right. Um, and we're going to just say we're going to do 10 ping pong balls a second. And each ping pong ball has a mass of 2.7 grams. Um, and let's suppose that you fire it off the back at 20 meters per second. You could do that with a paddle, maybe. Not 10 times per second, but anyway. That's sort of like a, a hard smash ping pong ball coming off the back. Well, what's going to happen is, remember the conservation of momentum, P initial equals P, oh, these are vectors, P initial equals P final. Um, well, initially, nothing is happening. Everyone is just, everything's at rest. You're just sitting on board the cart. So this is going to be zero. So zero equals P final, momentum final. Okay, well, what's going to happen is... Um, certainly the ping pong balls coming off the back of the cart have some momentum towards the right, right? So this is going to be, um, let's just think about one ping pong ball. So one ping pong ball is going to be MV going towards the right. Um, and what's going to happen is this must mean that big M, this is V ping pong ball, and then this is going to be V cart right? So if I sum the momenta afterwards, uh, it's going to have to be zero. So what that means is that the mass of the cart times the speed of the cart has to be minus m of the ping pong ball times the speed of the ping pong ball. So in other words, what's going to happen is if I fire a ping pong ball to the right, the cart is going to response by is going to respond by moving to the left. That's called a recoil just as you fire anything one direction, there's a recoil, there's a kickback in the other direction. And the kickback is going to be the ratio of those masses, in the ratio of those masses. So V cart is just going to be in the opposite direction, that's the minus sign, of the ratio of the masses. Typically it's pretty small, right? Because you're firing something small and the mass of the cart is big, uh, times the speed of uh, the ping pong ball. Okay. So that's going to be uh, why the rocket moves um, in a particular direction. This is going to be why the cart moves, in this case, uh, towards the left. All right, well, let's see uh, how fast it's going to be moving to the left. Uh, let's think about it in terms of force, because we're doing 10 times per second, right? So the force is going to be the change of momentum over time. And let's not worry about the direction. Let's just do uh, the magnitude of the force. We already know that the cart's going to be moving towards the, moving to the left. So the magnitude of this thing is going to be delta P, delta T. Okay, um, so this is going to be, the momentum is 2.7 grams for each ping pong ball. So it's going to be 0 0.0027 kilograms times the speed of each one is going to be 20. And then over how much time? 0.1 seconds, because we're going to do 10 per second, right? So what this is going to be is 0. Point, uh, what did I get? 0. 0.54. Oops. There's one more zero because I'm dividing by 0.1. So this is going to be 0.54. Five four um, newtons of thrust on the average. So each second, I'm going to get 0.54 newtons pushing the cart uh, towards the left. Okay, so let's see. How long can I do this? 
Um, this is going to be uh, 100. I have 100 kilograms worth of ping pong balls, and I'm going to do this um, 0 0.027 kilograms per second, right? I get 10 ping pong balls every second, so that's going to be mass of 10 ping pong balls. So this is going to be, if you do this out, this is going to be 3,700 seconds. That's the supply. That's sort of the, the time supply of ping pong balls that I've got. I can do this for, that's just over an hour, right? An hour is 3,600 seconds. So I can do this for just over an hour and then I'm going to run out of ping pong balls. Okay, so my acceleration, because this force is going to be constant as long as I keep doing this, my acceleration is going to be force divided by mass. Um, and so this is going to be a 0.54 newtons divided by what is my what is my overall oops this is the mass of the cart right this is the big thing so this is going to be 200 kilograms i know everyone's yelling at me because um once i start firing off ping pong balls the mass is changing isn't it so that's what i'm saying um about this not being right this isn't actually the right way to do it because the mass of this thing is changing a lot of times when we do conservation of momentum problems um we always say that the masses of the objects don't change but in rocketry whenever you do a rocket problem the mass certainly does change because you're squirting fuel out the back right um so the mass of the rocket is getting lighter but just for now let's just ignore it um because this is going to be a wrong answer. Then we'll treat it better in just a second. Okay, so if we just assume that the mass doesn't change, which is a lousy assumption, uh, so this is going to be 0.54 divided by 200, uh, and what did I get? 2.7 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, meters per second squared. So there's our acceleration um, from firing these ping pong balls out the back. Um, that's not much, right? But... The interesting thing is that's a constant acceleration. I mean, the way we're doing, if the mass doesn't change, that's a constant acceleration and that builds up over time. So after 3,700 seconds, how fast are we going? Um, well, if the acceleration is constant, which again, I know is wrong, but let's just do it anyway, just to see what happens. Um, the speed is just the acceleration times the time. So that's going to be uh, 2.7 times 10 to the minus 3 times 3,700 seconds. And so how fast are we going? If you do this, um, what you get is about uh, 10. It's pretty close. 10 meters per second. So you might think that firing ping pong balls, if, if, if you have a 200 kilogram cart, um, shooting ping pong balls out the back isn't going to do much. And you're right, that's a pretty gentle acceleration, but it does do something. And it's a constant acceleration, so the cart just keeps getting faster and faster. After an hour, you're going 10 meters per second, right? That's like a, a world-class sprinter. It's 22 miles an hour. Um, neat. Uh, the problem, as we said, though, is that this is not the right way to handle it. Um, we can get a sense for what the real answer should be if we were to do it right. Uh, here we imagine that the mass of the cart didn't change at all. Um, what if we assumed that we didn't even count the mass of the ping pong balls to begin with? What if we assumed uh, that the mass of the cart was 100 kilograms all the time? Right, That would be um, an overestimate because the mass of the cart is too small all the time. That's the ending mass of the cart. right? Um, but what would we get in that case? In that case... Our acceleration would just be twice as great because the mass is half as much. So if m equals 100 kilograms, we would just double it. v would be 20 meters per second. Okay, so we can kind of get a feel for what the real answer should be. Um, if we don't account for the missing mass, if we just imagine that all the ping pong balls stay on all the time, which is not very good, we get 10 meters per second. Uh, if we imagine that we don't count the ping pong balls at all and we just count the ending mass, uh, we get 20 meters per second. So you kind of know then that the real answer, um, if we treated the problem right and we accounted for the change in mass of the cart every single tenth of a second that was changing, we would get an answer somewhere in between the two. Um, so the interesting thing we're going to find out is, is it exactly between the two um, or is it a more complicated function? 
Um, and the short answer is it's a more complicated function. So um, next time, let's do it right. And what you might imagine is if we're changing the mass a little bit every time, that probably sounds like an integral. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate the change of mass as we go along um, and find out what the end speed should be. And that will be what we call the rocket equation. All right, so that's next.